Hey everybody, got a bad fragrance? Let's get into it. So guys, this is the Scented Art Channel. I want to thank you for being here. If you find that you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, this video came about, a little a little backstory, because I made a, a poll on a, on a Facebook group, a fragrance group, and uh, this was the one you guys chose, so this is by popular demand. I really hope you all enjoy this. So before we even get into it, guys, I wanted to say a few things. I wanted to say that this is my personal taste, my personal opinion. I mean no disrespect to you if you enjoy these fragrances and to the perfumers who, you know, generally do a really good job. And some of these actually have sold very well in the past. So let's get into it, guys. Um, I generally, in my top 10 videos, I do not uh, really rank them particularly in order. This time I did because I, I felt it was more appropriate. So let's start with number 10. The least, uh, the least <laughs> bad uh, out of the list, and let's get progressively uh, worse, I guess, guys, <laughs> as we go farther into the list. So, the first one is Hugo Boss Number One. So, this is a, a fragrance that comes in a, a square bottle and yellow juice. It's kind of hard to find now. Um, I got it early into my fragrance journey at a discount store. Um, I was kind of expecting a fougere, which I wanted my first fougere. I wanted something that kind of smelled like Ceruti, uh, 1881, or later I would find uh, Carcharil. But this fragrance turned out to be semi-resinous, like I was hoping for, but the fragrance smelled more of like a floral musk. And I generally do don't like floral musk fragrances. It just ended up smelling too yellow for, me, yellow for me. It just wasn't pleasant overall for my nose. So I ended up selling it to somebody who'd appreciate it. So that's... That's all I have to say about that one. So this isn't too bad, guys. Come on, number nine. So my number nine worst fragrance was Jaguar Parfum for men. So um, this fragrance, I believe, is sometimes marketed for men. Sometimes it doesn't say it's for men at all. Maybe it's unisex. Maybe it's it's made for women, you know, altogether. But um, the fragrance actually isn't a bad smelling fragrance. It smells kind of like caramel. It's kind of light and aromatic at the same time with having some fullness and some sweetness. It actually lasts about six hours and projected fairly. But uh, the fragrance was one of the first times I had dared to wear something unisex or maybe more leaning on the feminine side. And when I wore it one time to a college, in one of my classes, it was a little bit of a hot day. And I had only worn like three sprays, but still it was projecting fairly heavily. And somebody asked who was wearing uh, a perfume a female perfume and there was only about five guys in the room so that really uh, put a damper on that fragrance for me and I really didn't like it too much to begin with um, for ladies um, for for a $20 fragrance something that smells almost like um, 1 million Privé uh, not not as good quality and it has a little bit of a kind of like a, a cocoa amber feel in a way that's not a bad fragrance. So uh, guys, let's get to number eight. <laughs> okay, so this one is interesting. You might not have heard of this one. Boise, uh, 1920 Extreme. So guys, this is, uh, this is a high-end fragrance or semi-high-end. Semi um, these fragrances are anywhere from 110 or 20 to 150 usually. Uh, Boise does make some really good fragrances that I've found that I like. They have a patchouli one that I enjoy. Uh, Magia is a wonderful fragrance that uh, is a lighter, um, more playful, and a definitely more easy to love version of Creed Silver Mountain Water. So I'd recommend that from this brand. And again, all these brands might have spectacular fragrances. These are just ones that <laughs> didn't do the job for me. So maybe they'll do the job for you. But this one is Boise 1920 Extreme. What did this fragrance smell like to me? Um, it kind of smelled like it might have had vetiver in it, but it it smelled like it had a whole bunch of raw patchouli and kind of like um, an amber that was raw, but it didn't have really the animalistic edge of amber. It was just like the sharp kind of side. So if you can imagine sharp patchouli and sharp amber kind of mixed together and it had kind of a floral feel overall for me, it didn't work at all um, and it really didn't last particularly long either I got about four hours or so about longevity and fair projection so 
that wasn't a winner in my book, guys. <laughs> Let's go to um, number seven. Y'all know that, or we're thinking that one of these might have came to the list. Yes, there's a Koros. Koros Limited. Now, Koros itself, actually, the original, doesn't bother me too much. Um, it certainly isn't the most natural or the most lovely fragrance, in my opinion. Um, but Koros Limited tried to put more of an aquatic or kind of a fresh edge on, on the fragrance, which was kind of like a woody, animalistic, kind of green fragrance. For you guys who, um, you know, are kind of in the younger crowd, Koros was a really big uh, top seller back in the day. Now guys, if you're a gentleman and you love that fragrance, no disrespect to you, but if you're a younger guy and you say, how, how can somebody like an animalistic woody fragrance um, that's kind of green, I'd highly recommend you get your nose on Anateus by Chanel and see if, that, see if you like it. That's a really good uh, and maybe the best interpretation of that kind of fragrance. So guys, Koros Limited just ended up to me smelling like a, a smelly bathroom. I'm sorry to say it. I know it's cliche and some people have said it before, but uh, Koros Limited <laughs> really came across that way. So guys, let's jump to number six. Now guys, this is where the uh, things might start getting more personal. Things might, uh, <laughs> might offend you. So take it with a grain of salt. Um, the, my number six is Jupe Ohm. Jupe, the, um, that goop, that, uh, sauce and that pink, pink, uh, bottle is, uh, some kind of, some, they put something in there, all right. Guys, it smells highly synthetic to me. It smells extremely sweet. It has some kind of, um, kind of like Jolly Rancher type of smell to it. Guys, I mean, I, I, I'm the kind, I would personally recommend guys to steer away from it and go for Paco Rabanne's One Million any day of the week. But if that's your juice, go for it. This stuff just smells syrupy and sweet, almost like a, a cherry cough syrup in a way. It smells extremely loud, extremely sweet. I, I had my nose on a reformulation, I know, and that still, stuff still lasted a good six or seven hours with pretty good projection. So I can't even imagine what the first formulations were. I don't want to know. So <laughs> that's 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 my opinion there on uh, Jubon. So number five is this is one that I didn't uh, feel was disgusting. This is a uh, YSL Ohm de Jambre. So this you'd say if you like YSL fragrances, if you're a fan of YSL Ohm, which a lot of guys are, you'd be like. There's a flanker to Jambre. Is it? Is it uh, have ginger in it? Is it more citrusy? And you'd probably really be interested in it. Don't get excited, guys, because this one's disappointing. It's not terrible. So, what do you get? Um, the fragrance. It it smells kind of aromatic. It smells kind of clear. It smells um, has a little tiny bit of the YSL own DNA with ginger and a tiny bit of citrus, a tiny bit of powderiness. It, it, this one's a lot more ozonic, but it also has kind of like a gingerbread cookie kind of vibe to it. Not the smell particularly, but it kind of has the feeling maybe of like the smell of uh, gingerbread cookies in the air. So you would think that this fragrance would be spectacular. It's going to smell like the holidays. Guys, it, it's so disappointing because it literally lasted like 10 seconds on me. I barely got, uh, it barely projected off the skin at all, and it was gone in less than a minute, it had no projection, and had low, no longevity whatsoever. I'm convinced that if they did, really did want to sell this fragrance, and they made the concentration like 40 times as strong, that it could be a really good fragrance. I, I really wanted to enjoy it, and I kind of liked the smell in a way, but if a fragrance doesn't last more than you know, two, two and a half or three hours, you might not want to mess with it unless it's a room spray. And this fragrance does not last. Hey guys, it was a big disappointment for a lot of people and it, it kind of went straight to the discounters. And now it's kind of harder to find and people charge almost uh, retail for it. So I wouldn't recommend that one. 
So we're gonna go to one that's even more controversial, guys. It's this is my opinion once again. Um, this is um, Goldfield and Bank specific rock moss. Now, before you fan fan guys, you know, hate on me. Um, this fragrance does smell pleasant. It doesn't smell bad at all. But let me get into my opinion of it. This fragrance had so much hype behind it. I don't know who really started the hype. People were excited for this fragrance. People were raving about it and saying it was going to be the best thing. It was going to be as popular almost as like Aventus. People were pre-ordering bottles and people were uh, fighting over, you know, samples if they could even get their hands on those. Um, but uh, I got a sample of it eventually after the heat kind of died down for it. Um, a lot we saw you know tons of bottles being kind of sold here and there in Facebook groups and online and I was kind of I was kind of surprised at first until I got my sample and smelled it guys it in my opinion it smells like a slightly more natural um, for Versace's oh fresh with kind of an interesting kind of a bright moss note now that moss note is very nice I appreciate what they did there in the fragrance but but overall the fragrance it's not unique enough and, I mean and all fragrances don't have to be unique a lot of mass appealing fragrances are great um, I wear Invictus <laughs> for you know goodness sake but uh, the fragrance it only lasted like four and a half hours if that if I was lucky if I over applied and and it really didn't smell that great and for the money for how much they were charging for it, I could have like six bottles or five bottles of Versace Eau Fresh. And um, Versace Eau Fresh has like six hours longevity and projected, you know, two times as well. And smelled really just as good. So that's just my opinion, guys. Again, if you see videos about that hype of that fragrance, I'd, I'd suggest you just get a sample and see what you think of it. You might like it. So. Let's get into number three. So this is a niche fragrance, definitely more expensive, um, just like the uh, Boise 1920. But this one is even a more of an obscure brand. I was only able to find it um, through Scentbird, I believe it was, or one of those kind of services. But this one is Hercules Man, and the fragrance is called Laconia. So guys, um, this fragrance is It has a lot of yellow to it. Imagine if you boiled down yellow flowers and got like a yellow a yellow floral resin Which I don't yellow florals don't go well for me at all <laughs> Not at all, but um Guys it had that vibe it had some kind of like medicinal Oh, some kind of like cooking vibe to it. It, mu it might have been clove, which is a note, another fragrance note that I really don't like. Oh, the fragrance, it's one of those that I had is probably the worst reaction to out of any fragrance. And it's not the, it's not number one or for the worst fragrance because it's it's definitely high quality or fairly high quality. It's just that the fragrance doesn't work for me. It has a good composition. The fragrance dries down and uh, transitions quite nice. But the fragrance almost want, made me want to throw up when I smelled it. And that's just my personal taste um, with, with strong yellow florals and a man's fragrance. And kind of like a, to the point where it almost smells animalistic, guys. So that's uh, Laconia for you. The next one. This is controversial, controversial for sure. Um, this I'm just gonna say it. This is a uh, silver scent by Bogart. <laughs> guys, I don't know what you guys are smelling. I don't know what what you guys are doing out there. This fragrance to me smells like um, a kid tried to recreate Platinum Egoist. Platinum Egoist has sweet some sweetness. It has white resin. It's classy and aromatic and clear. Some people might say it smells clean. This is this is the the five year old got a chemistry set and tried to make his dad's fragrance. Guys, it smells like grape Kool Aid. 
Um, it smells very loud, highly synthetic. It uh, is way too sweet. The, the vibe it gives off isn't elegant or clean. It just doesn't seem well composed. It doesn't have really have a fullness or a smoothness that I like in fragrances. Guys, I couldn't wait to wash it off my skin. Um, and I'm sorry if you enjoy that fragrance. And if you do, you know, do your deal, do, do your thing, guys. But uh, I won't be wearing it. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> so, uh, my number one fragrance is a mix of disappointment and terrible smell. This is Aramis Bermuda Tonic. Now guys, this is uh, another house that isn't as popular today as it was back then. Aramis still produces uh, fragrances for more of the gentlemen. I used to, I kind of think that they're kind of an average designer, but uh, I don't know what guys what they were thinking. Aramis, okay, what were you guys thinking? So, what do we have? We, we have a fragrance called Bermuda and Tonic. Bermuda is uh, probably going to make you think of something like the Caribbean. It's going to make you think of something fresh and citrusy. It's going to make you think of something uh, lively. Maybe something that do, would do re really well in the sun. Uh, when fragrances say Tonic, it usually is a, a more citrusy version. Maybe it has a little bit of booziness to it and uh, usually is lighter on the projection, a little bit more mass appealing. So, how could a fragrance called Bermuda Tonic be so bad? <laughs> Guys, again, I don't hate on synthetic fragrances. I wear fragrances like Invictus and, and, and some others that um, you can tell that they're not the most natural when you smell them up close. Uh, Ferragamo F Black, for example, as well. But this fragrance smells highly synthetic. I think that uh, people who don't know fragrances will would notice that it's synthetic. Guys, I don't do sharp lime very well. I think that the, the lime in Virgin Island water is even a little bit sharp. The, the lime that comes off Bermuda Tonic is the most synthetic and the most sharp lime that I've ever smelled. It made my nose want to bleed. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not even really joking. It, uh, it has ridiculous projection. It, it uh, had enormous projection, the strongest projecting citrus fragrance that I've ever smelled. But um, it definitely is filled with some of the, you know, most synthetic citrus chemicals that they could ever find. Um, to put it into words, I've smelled floor cleaners that smell more natural. Um, I'm not trying to be insulting. Yes, it has a little bit of a coconut feel. Some people have compared it to Virgin Island water. Guys, it doesn't smell like it at all. So, um, if you don't think um, English Laundry Tahitian Waters smells remotely similar to Virgin Island water, I don't know how you think that this Bermuda tonic smells like it. <laughs> Guys, um, I couldn't wait to try to wash it off my skin. It lasted a good six hours. Um, if you're the kind of guy who just, you know, wants to put on a grin and we kind of choke people out by overspraying this when you go to the beach. Maybe this is for you, but I can't think of any situation or any fragrance where you would want to wear this. If you wanted something very loud and very citrusy and mass appealing, I mean, there's great fragrances like uh, Versace's Eau Fresh. There's Invictus Aqua. There's there's some good fragrances out there, guys. So don't get me wrong. But that one just didn't work for me. Um, I thought of giving some honorable mentions at the beginning. I'll just give them at the end. Um, one of them is Dior Sauvage. It smells good for the most part. I just find the Abroxin too, um, too strong. But I, do, I am looking forward to smelling the Parfum. It might be the right thing for me. But guys, that's the end of the video. <laughs> I thank you for being here with me. I thank you for enjoying this time. I hope you got a good laugh out of this. Um, I would love to know what is your most disliked fragrance. What is a fragrance that you resold as soon as you got it in the mail? Or you threw it in the trash? What is your worst blind buy? Maybe? What is your worst disappointment in a fragrance because of all the hype or maybe just your personal high expectations? Um, this has been my opinions. This has been my experience. And um, 
I hope it's an addition to the community. I'm going to tag a couple reviewers and see if they take up the challenge, guys, because this is a funny topic. I think a lot of times us reviewers and people are kind of scared to share our own opinions because we think we might offend somebody. But uh, I would love to know what other, <laughs> what fragrances you dislike, you know, what fragrances other people dislike. It doesn't have to be personal, and this we don't have to have a war over, you know, which fragrances we like or dislike. So <laughs> I'm gonna tag a big beard business. He's uh, he's really growing. He's doing a really good job, and uh, Brooklyn fragrance lover. You're a great guy, Carlos. Really enjoy your content. I hope you'll subscribe uh, to other guys or how many is you would like. So uh, let's get this started in the fragrance community. Guys, again, I hope you enjoyed this content at the Scentitar channel. Where we certainly love fragrances. And uh, they're kind of a part of us. So until next time, guys. Peace out.